Welcome to another video friends. Today we have a double brew day and uh, it's all about lactose, aka milk sugar. Now I've always enjoyed a good milk stout, I like the slight sweetness, but what really turned me on to lactose um, was a mind-blowing trip to Evil Twin Brewery in New York City, which is about a year ago. I'll put some footage on the screen, but that was unbelievable. What those guys do there, they're kind of like Willy Wonka in his chocolate factory. What they do with fruit beers and milkshake IPAs and so on is, is just unbelievable and really urge you to get a can. It's not for everyone, the traditionalists won't be into that at all, but I like I, I like all styles of beer really. Um, I, I like pushing the boundaries and experimenting, that's... Oh, kinky! To me what it's all about. Brewing with lactose is, uh, it obviously adds sweetness, hence the milk sugar, but it also adds a nice smooth mouthfeel as well. So it's, uh, it's a great thing to get into your, uh, your brewing repertoire. What we got going on with the Grainfather S40 is a milkshake IPA coming in at 7.5%. Now that's the one that's been inspired by uh, Evil Twin Brewery. Heavy on the oats, 30% oats, the rest pale ale and just a light lick of caramel as well. It's going to be hopped with Azaka Equinot, it's going to have Cascade and a heavy dry hop with uh, with Citra. But what we really want is to is, is, is the fruit to, sh to, to shine through because we're adding mango passion fruit but we're also adding vanilla as well. Now we're going to add those after active fermentation and then dry hop with, for the last three to four days. The, the yeast we're using is Y-Yeast 3068 which is a German uh, yeast strain. It's, uh, it's very popular, uh, it's great for fruit beer so I wanted to give that a go because I really want to unlock, given it's, it's going to be a fruit milkshake IPA, I really, really want to unlock those banana esters which is achieved by fermenting at a fairly high temperature and also under pitching. On the other brew system to my right Ed is going to be cooking up a uh, classic milk stout, about 5.8% ABV with Fuggles and Cascade. And he is using pale roasted barley, chocolate malt and oats. And the yeast is going to be uh, Safale's English Ale, which is SO4. We've got the official dog here, the brew dog if you will. Brew dog? Brew dog? Sounds familiar. <laughs> See, I did tell you Ed was here. <laughs> what are you doing? What's with the jumper? I don't want the dust getting in my eyes. It makes me sneeze for ages. How are we looking in there? Oh, this is a nice fitting you got on there. The new attachment, the spray attachment. Spray attachment. Hot side aeration, let us know your thoughts. <laughs> Either love it or hate it. That's going to kick off, isn't it? I already know. Give me some comments about that. The whirlpooling is working nicely. That's the whirlpool attachment you can see on the right hand side. This is an experimental brew system. Nice tan coloured foam on the top there. Oh, nothing but the best! Uh, yeah. That looks like it's going nice to me. Yeah. And you can see you've got some sparge water there on the kettle to your left. Good, and I, uh, on the milkshake on the uh, S40, I am about 20 minutes into the boil. Quantity of lactose, or sweet spot if you will, is purely down to personal preference. I recommend getting hold of a few non-lactose beers around the same ABV and style as the one you have in mind to brew, and then mix them with lactose starting at the lower end of the scale, say 10 grams per litre, and work your way up from there. In our milkshake IPA, we're rolling with 27.5 grams per litre, which is on the higher side, but we wanted to mask the high alcohol content of this beer. For the milk stout, we went 26 grams per litre and we're very happy with that. We add lactose during the last 10 minutes of the boil 
by gradually mixing with the hot wort in a jug. He scores! Yeah, um, so that, yeah, that's a wrap on the old brew day. Mm. Uh, went pretty good. The milk stout, you actually managed to do... What are you laughing about? <laughs> you, managed, you managed to do a gravity reading, which was bang on. Bang on. Some of us forgot to do a gravity reading, but let's what just, a, let's just a, assume it was bang on. What a cowboy. Yeah, sorry about that. Can we um, have a look at your gravity reading? No, that's not. No, 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 no. They'd be interested to see. No, they wouldn't. They really wouldn't. This channel will go downhill if that comes out. That's all good. They're both in the brew fridge, so we're good on that score. You were pleased with the unbranded brew system that we have here, the secret brew system. The mysterious brew system. Yeah, it worked really well. we've been sent to put it through its paces. Happy with that? Yeah, really happy. Whirlpool was good. Nice hot cone. Nice slick brew day. Yeah, apart from all the mess on the floor. But Yeah, let's not talk about that. Um, so we're good. So the milk stout's just going to ferment out. There's going to be no adjuncts or any dodgy additions to that. Um, that's just going to, yeah, it's mm. fermenting now. And then the milkshake IPA is, uh, once active fermentation's finished, I'm going to fruit it. Yeah. That's what they call it in the business. I'm going to fruit it. Um, and uh, see how that turns out. So uh, stay tuned. And we'll get to the next phase shortly. You want to load me up with a little more there? It is good. So it's the uh, it's the juicing and puree day today. The um, the beers have been fermenting nicely. Active fermentation. It's four days after at the moment. Uh, I've got the stout over here, so that's all good. The milkshake is in the uh, in the brew fridge here. You probably can't see that on camera, but you're gonna. So yeah, I've got my uh, my purees and uh, and juices here. There were no chemicals, only juices and berries. First thing to note is that I have adjusted the fermentation temperature down to 20 degrees from 23. Now, as you can see here, I've got a, a range of uh, juice and puree as well. Just on the vanilla, I'm not going to add the vanilla until we uh, to transfer to the keg. So, because there's no point, because it doesn't need any time to infuse with the beer. It's not like I'm using beans or anything, I'm using extracts, so that can wait. But the, uh, the, the juices and the purees, I want to, to ferment out as much of that sugar as possible. So we're adding them now. Hope the yeast like mango and passion fruit. The reason I'm using factory packaged juices and purees is it's easier. They're fresh, they're pasteurized, there's gonna be no nasties in there. I can pour them straight in. With fruit, uh, fruit you're looking at serious grammage. It's expensive. I'm under no illusions that the majority of commercial breweries, certainly for commercial beers, don't use fresh fruit. Obviously with the high-end stuff in bottles, you know, like the kind of stuff that London Beer Factory are knocking out at the Barrel Project, that's a completely different thing. They use loads of fruit, up to, up to a kilo a litre, believe it or not. A lot yeah. of fruit, yeah. a lot of fruit there. But straight away you get the vine step and yeast, don't you? That's, that's what stands out for me most of all. Yeah, with the under pitch here, I think so. Yeah, yeah, banana, pineapple, loads of, uh, loads of mango and passion fruit, obviously, given the puree. Yeah, yeah. Not pretty much vanilla, aroma wise. No, you were, you mentioned the other day, if you were going to do it again, you'd use a bit more. Yeah, I'd use a touch more. Maybe, yeah. maybe like, maybe, I don't know, 30% more. Yeah, no, no, nothing too extreme. Let's give it a taste. It's even better. It's slightly bitterer mm. than, than really. I think so. I just we're not going to lie. We had tasted these yeah over the last week or ten days or so. For me, I think it's even better. You think? Yeah. Really I, it feels nice. slightly drier, and I don't know whether that is is is. I don't know what that's down to. When we when we first tasted, I thought it was quite harsh. Then it went to mellow, and I was blown away by it. The, first, the when it was first carbonated, I thought, mm. wow, that like that that's that's the best that's the best beer I brewed. 
it's 1022, so you know it, it's got a nice level of sweetness. It's not, it, it's not too much. Yeah. Do you know what I mean about that? It feels a bit, a bit drier. Yeah, uh, yeah. I certainly get what you mean about the bitterness. Mm. Um, maybe, yeah, slightly less. It's only 10 hops. IBU. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 10 IBU, but it doesn't. It, it feels mm. more than that, and I wonder whether that's the that, that that is the dry hop, and whether maybe next time, on this style of beer, milkshake, I just need to dial down that dry hop a bit. Yeah. Because it was done with. Um, uh, nine grams per litre of, uh, of citra and cascade, but I I I, I really like it. It's, it's it's very fruity. It's got a lot of aroma. I'd be very happy with that. But a, a first attempt at a sort of milkshake. It's style strong. Yeah. It's yeah. strong. Yeah, yeah, it is. Seven and a half percent. Mm. But I, I, you know, the mouth feels good. You know, the lactose mm. has, has has done its work. You know, it's five hundred and fifty grams of lactose. Um, 27 and a half grams per litre, that is. It's quick maths. Yeah. <laughs> it's almost like you worked it out in advance. Yeah, it's almost like, yeah. <laughs> right. it on the fridge over there. <laughs> but it's, it's nice, you know, I, I, you, you know, there's obvious oats in there that, that are doing their thing. Mm. I'd, I'd probably go for a slightly softer profile of water next time. Okay. No, I'm, I'm really impressed with that. I think it's absolutely lovely. I mean, absolute chocolate, isn't it? For yeah. Me, anyway, so I, I really like the fact that it's two thirds chocolate versus roasted roasted mobs. I wanted it to be mellow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, mellow and chocolatey, which it 100 percent is. You've lost all your head. You just sucked all your head off that. Haven't you? I think I have. <laughs> <laughs> I, the aroma is quite floral, isn't it? Oh wow! You like that? Yeah, really good. Really do like it. I mean, I think most of the work on this is in the brewing process, not the uh, recipe development. Yeah. Well, <laughs> let, let the people decide that. That is lovely though. But it, it, you know, it came out higher. It came out six and a half percent as opposed to five point eight we were shooting for. You blame me for that? Is that you I'm hundred percent blaming you. Yeah. <laughs> that's not necessarily a bad thing, is it? People direct the uh, criticism here. <laughs> yeah. um, lactose five hundred and twenty grams. So what's that? About twenty five ish, twenty five grams per liter. Yeah. Didn't work. Didn't work that some out in advance. Yeah, I I, I really like it. I, I you know with, with the fuggles for the bittering, it's it's. It, it, it's, it's quite, it's kind of earthy, isn't it? Mm. Quite floral. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, right where you want it to be. It reminds me of a Guinness I previously brewed, but with the addition of the lactose and that little bit more ABV and you know, a little bit more alcohol. And a, and a bit more mouthfeel, I'd say, yeah, probably as well. Absolutely. Oh yeah, definitely. I really like the mouthfeel, like I'm really happy with that. Yeah. But, you know, bearing in mind that you can spend all your time gorging on 10 to 15% imperial yeah. stouts, then, then sometimes when you come to taste like a fairly conventional strength, yeah, well, it just it feels a bit. It's obviously down with the lactose, it's watery. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. Which really sort of brings out the you know the malt qualities and then the um, the chocolate notes. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, 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 it's lovely. Really good. I'm really happy. Um, so there we have the Brew Bros Classic Milk Stout available on the shop brewbroshop.co.uk as a kit. Sign up with three things: one, brew this beer; two, like the video; three, subscribe; and four, take care. <laughs> <laughs>